So Mayor Pete, right? He's the now the secretary. Pete. Secretary Pete. Get it right. Now the highest ranking openly gay cabinet member. Now he's uh, head of transportation, which is not the most glamorous springboard. The agency that he runs is sitting there right in the middle of climate change, autonomous vehicles, flying taxis, equity, and what I would say are three of the four biggest topics of the Biden presidency. Uh, this turns out to be a place that you can be at the center of all the Biden issues and you get to do favors for people around the country. If you have political ambitions, that's a pretty good place to be. Are we good distance? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Nice to see you. Secretary, here. welcome back to Axios on HBO. Sure thing. So when you were sworn in, you were the first male cabinet secretary in American history whose husband held the Bible. You were sworn in by Vice President Harris, who of course is a pioneer on multiple fronts. Well, it was a really historic moment. And you know, just before we walked out for the ceremony, the Vice President turned to me and uh, said, make sure to be present because it'll uh, go by quickly. And I'm glad she said that because uh, uh, you know, you, you can forget as you're racing through these motions. But as I stood there with Chasten at my side, the vice president and her husband, uh, that's not a sentence you could have said uh, very long ago. And it's a reminder of uh, the, the changes that are underway and uh, a reminder that we've got some work to do as a country too, so that one day that's unremarkable. Along with that history, what responsibilities do you feel? You're gonna have an outside role because of your story, because of your background. Well, I know that I've got a responsibility to do a good job for lots of reasons, uh, partly uh, because of uh, uh, the, the, the eyes of history and the president has challenged all of us who are serving on this team to deliver at a moment of unprecedented challenge. So much is on the plate of this administration. I'm convinced that the best way through all of those is results. You've talked about a generational opportunity on infrastructure, climate, equity, like those are the Biden touchstones. Mm -hmm. Which of those do you think will be the hardest to show demonstrable, clear, provable progress? Well, the challenge with all of these is that they are decades or centuries in the making. We don't have decades or centuries uh, to deal with them. Uh, scientifically, we don't have decades to resolve the climate challenge. Morally, uh, we must not take decades to deliver racial justice in this country. Uh, and so to me, all of these are of a piece. All of these go together. You've spent a lot of time thinking about transportation equity. And you've said you wanna make a real difference. What does that look like? Some of the signal moments of the civil rights movement revolved around transit and transportation. Rosa Parks taking a seat on that bus, the Montgomery bus boycott and the phase of the civil rights movement that that led to are reminders that the, the history has always been intertwined between racial justice and transportation. What we can do is make sure we're investing in areas that have been neglected. Uh, a lot of people know about the idea of food deserts where you can't get uh, uh, access to fresh food. There are transit deserts disproportionately in black and brown neighborhoods where people can't get access to economic opportunity. So what's something we can look at in four years and say on equity and transportation, Secretary Buttigieg was successful? Look at the neighborhoods that have been excluded in the past, but we've got a lot of work to do to better support uh, small and medium-sized businesses uh, owned by people who have been disadvantaged or underestimated. Look at the makeup of those who actually work in the sector. Uh, uh, people from engineering to uh, airline pilots to people in this building. You want to change? Well, we want to make sure it reflects America. What's the biggest way that transportation has been permanently changed by the pandemic. It's too soon to know for sure, but I think it's safe to say that our old patterns of life, uh, the nine to five Monday through Friday commuting patterns, are not gonna be exactly the same. Yeah, and so how might that change what your staff does? Uh, you know, we think trains, planes, and automobiles, but uh, uh, what about bikes, scooters, wheelchairs for that matter? Those are things you plan to pay more attention to. Absolutely, yeah. Look, roads aren't only for vehicles. We gotta make sure that, that pedestrians and individuals and bicyclists and businesses can all coexist on the same roadway. What do you think of requiring a COVID test before someone flies even domestically? Well, there's an active conversation with the CDC right now. What I can tell you is it's gonna be guided by data, by science, by medicine, and by the input of the people who are actually gonna to have to uh, carry this out. But here's the thing, the, the safer we can make air travel in terms of perception as well as reality, uh, the more people are gonna be ready to get back in the air. Do you have an outsized following online What's the secret for other leaders to communicate with millennials in the way that you clearly have? 
what I can tell you is there are a lot of folks out there who want to hear directly uh, from their leaders uh, on matters official and unofficial. Think about how we build trust in ordinary face-to-face -face life. It's getting to know somebody and being around them. Uh, when you're leading a cabinet agency, maybe you can't be around 300 million Americans uh, personally, but uh, you can open that door a little bit. And that's another important way, I think, of breaking down mistrust. And how do you plan to continue that direct communication in your new job? Well, it's uh, getting out there. And uh, if it's not safe physically to get out there, it's doing it virtually. And uh, you're going to see me uh, very much approach this job as something you can't do just sitting behind a desk. After all, it's uh, the Department of Transportation. It's all about movement. The last time you were in this building, uh, you were Mayor Pete. That's right. Um, does anybody still slip, by the way? All the time. Yeah, <laughs> starting with my own staff. And uh, uh, I'll always answer to mayor. Thank you for doing this. Sure thing. Glad it worked so out. Appreciate it.